في شان حبيبه ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولن ترضى انك اليهود ولا النصارى حتى تتبع ملتهم صدق الله صدق الله العظيم respected imam and my dear brothers and sisters i read to you a very short verse an ayah from the holy quran from surah al baqarah surah al baqarah ayah number 120 In it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He reminds us all, Muslims, about our relationship, the relationship between ourselves and the Jews and the Christians. He says, Allah says, وَلَن تَرْضَى أَنْكَ الْيَهُودُ وَلَن نَصَارَى حَتَّى تَتَّبِيَ مِلَّتَهُمْ Be on guard, be warned, O Muslims, that the Jews and the Christians will never, never be satisfied with you Muslims, unless you follow the brand of religion. Lan, Lan in Arabic is a double negative. Never, never, most certainly not. They'll never be satisfied with you. We tell them that we believe in Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, revered Moses, may peace be upon him. We tell the Christians that we believe in Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, revered Jesus, may peace be upon him. That we believe in his miraculous birth, that he was born without any male intervention. We believe that he is the Messiah, the Messiah, translated Christ. We believe that he gave life to the dead by God's permission, and he healed those born blind and the lepers by God's permission. Does that satisfy them? Does that satisfy the Christians? No. They said, but you see, you don't believe in him as your personal savior. You don't believe that he is your God. Jesus Christ is God Almighty who came down to earth in human form. You don't believe that. That he died for your sins. You don't believe that. So there's a fight. There's a war. Unless you become a Christian. But then the Christians are still not satisfied. The Roman Catholic won't be satisfied unless you become a Roman Catholic. The Anglican won't be satisfied with you unless you become an Anglican. The Jehovah's Witness won't be satisfied with you unless you become a Jehovah's Witness. The Seventh-day Adventists won't be satisfied with you unless you become a Seventh-day Adventist. Shit. Man, they're going to divide this Ummah into a thousand different pieces. And they won't be satisfied. So Allah tells us that they will never be satisfied with you. What are you going to do? There's only one of two things you can do. Either you follow their brand of religion, or you change him. Either you get changed, or you change him. Now my first experience, but before I get to that, I said Surah Al-Baqarah. This ayah I quoted for you was from Surah Al-Baqarah. Now, whenever somebody, anybody, any speaker comes along and gives you any reference from the Holy Quran, you make it your duty to go home and check up in the Quran at home. Not that you're doubting the speaker, that the speaker has got any reason to bluff you, to cheat you. No, no, no. For your own personal benefit, you go and check up the ayah, the reference, see it with your own eyes, read it with your heart and mind, and then that knowledge becomes a part of you. You in turn will be able to share with others. Once you verify it, see it. Otherwise, it's entertainment. You're getting entertained, mashallah. You know, Mr. Dida spoke very well. The Sheikh and Imam spoke very well, mashallah. Finish. No, no, you go and check it up at home. But how are you going to check up at home? I said, Surah Al-Baqarah. And there are 114 surahs in the Quran. Did you know that? 114. So are you going to start looking from page by page? Baqarah, Baqarah, looking for Baqarah, looking for Baqarah, Baqarah, Baqarah. 114 chapters, surahs. How are you going to find Surah Baqarah? If any student, school student, can give me the answer, I will present that student, not the grown-up alims, you know. 
But the student, you know, school, students, students, young people, you give me the answer, I give you this Quran. This encyclopedia called the Quran, English translation, Arabic text, English translation, commentary, tafsir. I give it to you before I leave. Before I leave. You just tell me how do you find Baqarah in the Quran? Yes, my son. Huh? Great. This Quran is yours. At the end of it, you pick it up from my secretary. Just stand up. Stand up. This is my secretary. You will pick it up from him. That's yours. This South African gold. This is South African gold. <laughs> it's yours. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Now, my first experience about the statement Allah makes that the Jews and the Christians will never be satisfied with you was when I left school. I started working in a country shop some 25 miles outside the city of Durban. There in the shop from across the valley from the shop there was a Christian mission. And the missionaries what they were learning, training to do jihad, to fight against the Muslims, they used to come to the shop to buy sh sugar and salt, rice, flour, they came to buy. But when they came to buy, they would start attacking us. All Muslim young men left school, cheap labor. They said, you know your Muhammad? Sallallahu Alaihi They didn't say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They said, your Muhammad has so many wives. I knew nothing about that. He said, you know your Muhammad? He spread his religion at the point of the sword. He forced Islam down people's throats, that if you don't accept Islam, chop off your head. I knew nothing about that. He said, you know, your Muhammad, he copied the Quran from the Jews and the Christians. I knew nothing about that. The only thing I knew about Islam, as well as the other young men working with me, that we read the Kalima, the Shahada. If I met any of you those days, if I ask you, where you come from? He said, Kenya. I said, what you? In what religion you belong to? He said, I'm a Muslim. He said, come on, read the Shahada, the Kalima. And if you said, La ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah, you pass. That's all. What it meant, I didn't know. But we know it's like a magic formula. If you can say it, you're a Muslim. If you can't say it, you're not a Muslim. That's all. I prayed the way my father prayed. I made wudu the way my father made wudu. I made song, fasting, the way my faster, fa father fasted. That's, that's about Islam. All the Christians are attacking us. I knew nothing about that. Making life miserable for us. All the young men working. Because our knowledge was limited. What you do under those attacks? You want to leave the job and run away, but you can't find jobs. So you stick it out. And you're crying to Allah, Ya Allah, show me a way, show me a way. And Allah showed me a way, which I'm now sharing with you. He showed me a way. You see, I had a hunger for reading. Anything, any, everything. Read, 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 man. If I can't get anything, I get old newspaper, I read. Old newspaper, I read. Because everything I read is news to me. Maybe five years old, six months old. I didn't know that today is news today. Mm -hmm. That I didn't. Anything that I read, I didn't know is news. So I, that's my pastime. So one Sunday morning, I go to my boss's warehouse looking for some reading material, some magazines in a pile of old newspapers. I'm searching. So I find a magazine, I put it one side, and newspapers the other side. Another magazine, I put it one side, and the newspaper another side. While I'm doing this exercise, I come across a worm-eaten book full of mildew. When I took it up, I started to sneeze. <laughs> started to sneeze, mildew. And on the book was written, is Harul Haq. It's spelled out in Latin script, English. I-Z-H-A-R-U-L-H-A-K. Is Harul Haq. Say, is Harul Haq? Sounds like Muslim. Is Harul Haq. Doesn't sound Swahili. Doesn't sound like in, uh, English. Is Harul Haq sound like Muslim? I said, what is Harul Haq? So at the bottom I find smaller writing. In brackets, the words written, the truth revealed. So I said, ah, maybe Is Harul Haq means the truth revealed. 
So I started opening the book and start reading it there and there in the dust on the floor. No time to waste. I'm hungry. I read this book that this book is about the British conquest of India. Like the British came and conquered here. Your Kenya and your Ghana and your Nigeria. And they conquered India and Malaysia. When they conquered my country, I come from India. When they conquered my country, the British people, they realized that anytime anybody will give them trouble in India will be the Muslims. Because power, rule, dominion was taken out from their hands. And once you taste power, you aspire for it once more again. So the Muslim is the troublemaker. So if they can change the Muslim, teach him to turn the other cheek, like Jesus said. He will strike you on the right cheek, give him the other. Teach the Muslim to turn the other cheek and you can rule India for a thousand years. So they started to pour in the missionaries like frogs in the rainy season. I don't know whether you have frogs in Kenya. You have frogs? <laughs> yes, you have frogs. We have a lot in India. Like frogs, they started pouring in into India. And they started challenging the Muslims to public debates. Munazira. Munazira. Debates. At first, the Muslims were reluctant for two reasons. Number one, the British had just conquered us. If our Imams speak too hard, too harsh, they might be sent to the Andaman Islands, like Robben Island in South Africa. Black waters. Shh, keep out of harm's way. Keep your mouth shut. Mum's the word. And number two, they didn't know the language. They couldn't debate in English. Good excuse. We don't know the language. And number two, this guy, he might send us to black waters. <laughs> so the missionaries, they learned our language, Urdu, the language of the native, Muslims. They mastered our language. That's the genius of the Christian. Wherever he goes, he masters your language. He comes here, he learns Swahili. He goes to Ghana, he learns Ghanaian. He goes to Nigeria, he learns Hausa. He goes to Egypt, he learns Arabic. That's the genius of this language, of the man, this nation. Wherever they come to South Africa, in Natal, Zulu. Among Pondolan, the Kosa, Chana. Every language they master. So they mastered our language and started challenging the Muslims to debates in Urdu. Your language, the language of the Alims, the learned men of India. Now the young men go and tell the Alims, says, Maulana Sahib means respected Maulana Shah. These guys are challenging us in our language. How can you say no? So Maulana Abdul Aziz of Delhi, he was forced to accept the challenge. And a debate took place. That's about 100 years ago. And 100,000 people gathered. There was no sound system, no loudspeakers, nothing. <laughs> what 100,000 people? <laughs> India is a land of teeming millions. 100,000, what they can listen? But no, they just want to enjoy the fun. The 100,000 are there. People nearby, they can hear. But the people at the back, they're just asking, what did he say? Say, Maulana gave one uppercut. He gave like this, he gave like that. So somebody is giving commentary at the back. So the debate took place between Maulana Abdul Aziz of Delhi and Reverend Founder, the Britisher. And the Britisher, Reverend Founder, started by suggesting to the Maulana that Maulana Sahib, Sheikh, respected Sheikh, get started. Get started with the debate. So the Maulana says, look, you Christians are our elder brothers. Christianity preceded Islam by 600 years. So you are 600 years older than us. Christianity came first. And according to our culture, our elder brother has the first chance. So you are our elder brother, you get started. Number two, you are our guest. You are a visitor, our guest. No doubt an unwelcome guest. But still, you are our guest. So according to our culture, the guest has the first chance. So the reverend was forced to start. And he started with a question. In Urdu, in our native language. Like here, if it was here in Swahili. So you don't know English? Swahili. You're Shah. Come on, talk to me. So the reverend started. This is Maulana Sahib, respected sir, Shah. Where is your Prophet Muhammad now, now, this minute? Where is he now, this moment? 
where is he? So the Mawlana thought for a moment and he said that our Nabi Kareem وسلم, the Holy Prophet Muhammad is in Jannatul Firdaus, in heavenly bliss, in paradise with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Out of that answer came the second question. He said, all right, all right, tell us, Mawlana Sahib, respected Sheikh, tell us, where was your Prophet Muhammad when his grandson Hussein was martyred at Karbala, was slaughtered, killed? Where was he then? So the Mawlana again thought for a moment and he said, he was still in Jannatul Firdaus, heavenly bliss with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Out of that answer came the third question. It was planned, strategy. He said, all right, all right, tell us now, Mawlana Sahib, that if your Muhammad was with his Allah, did he not ask Allah for help? He said, look, they're killing my grandson, please save him. Did he not ask his Allah for help? So the Mawlana thought for a long time, and the reverend felt he had him cornered. So he started stamping his feet, come on, come on. Did he not ask his Allah for help? So the Mawlana started slowly. He said, yes, he did. He did. Natural thing to do. He did ask Allah for help. Then what did Allah say? Because we know he wasn't saved. And there was an inordinate pause, a very long pause. And the reverend again started ba banging his feet. Come on, come on. What did Allah say? And the people felt that this Maulana got us all cooked. Finish. He's finished us up. Finished. This Maulana has got caught out. Come on, come on. So the Maulana slowly, he said, Allah cried. Allah cried. He said, what? Allah cried? He said, yes, Allah cried. He said, I couldn't save my own son, Jesus. How can I save your grandson? <laughs> And the debate was over. The debate was over. Finish. Knockout. Knockout blow. God crying, so I can't save my own sin. Jesus, that's what the Christians say. See, that Jesus Christ on the cross, he cried, Allah, Allah, Lama Sabahtani. So, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So, this God let his own son down. He said, Well, if I can't save my own son, how can I save your grandson? <laughs> now, the answer had nothing to do with true or false. This is a matching of the wits. Who is cleverer? The one who is cleverer, like they say, that twice armed is he whose cause is just. If you are on the right, your strength is doubled. You know, you're prepared to die for hak. But thrice armed is he who gets in first. The guy who knocks you out first, he's like three times stronger than you. You know, you, you are in the right, but before you can, you get a blow and get knocked out. <laughs> So the Maulana knocked out. Now I'm reading this in that book. And that book made interesting reading for me. Because my problem was the Christians. So he's telling me that this verse here contradicts that. Matthew contradicts Mark. Mark contradicts Luke. Luke contradicts John. Shh, shh, shh. Then I went and bought a six penny New Testament, second hand. And I started marking, marking, marking. And then when these Christian missionaries came, I said, hey, Everybody that comes to buy something, I say, hey, where are you going on Sunday after church? I say, no, nowhere. I say, where do you live? I say, uh, like this, like that. I say, right. Sunday morning, 11 o'clock, I come and see you. Okay, we'll exchange the word of God. So I go every Sunday morning. That's my hobby now. I work during the whole week, Sunday morning, my own time. I go along and find this guy and say, now for one point you give me in your favor, I give you 10 against it. You give me one blow, I give you 10. That's the only language I knew. But out of that exercise came this position, this knowledge. There is a law at work. There is a law at work. Our Imam in the first ruku, in the first rakah, he read the surah. In which he says, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِّمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ Who is better in speech than he who invites people to Allah's ways? وَأَمِلَ صَالِحًا And is a doer of good deeds. وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And he says, we are those who have submitted our wills to the will of Allah. Who is better in speech? Allah is telling, there is nobody better in speech. There is no better talking than this. 
that you invite people to Allah's ways. Best pastime, best hobby, best occupation is this, Allah says. The best. Talk about Allah's deen. Talk about Allah's deen. So I started talking, talking, and I talked myself into this position that people say, call me Shaykh, call me Ustaz, call me Doctor, call me Professor. <laughs> I'm just Mr. D, that, but no mind. I've got no time to start correcting you people to say, no, 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 I'm not Shaykh. Oh, I'm not Ustaz. I'm not. Carry on. Let's do some job. Now, that was the old fashioned. The Christians were finding how to attack Islam, the Prophet, and the Holy Quran. But today, they have become more sophisticated. They're using their brains, they're using psychology. The latest, the latest invention of the Christians is, I discovered in the Sudan, I was there last year, June, in the Sudan. In the Sudan, after my lecture at the university, a university student, he stands up and is posing a question to me. He said, Mr. Dirat, Christian missionaries are coming from America into the Sudan, they're coming from England into the Sudan, and we welcome them. Traditional Arabic, Arabic hospitality. So, ahlan wa sahlan, most beautiful words of welcome. In any language, ahlan wa sahlan, meaning just think you're a member of the family, ahl, and be sahl, and be at ease. If you're gonna pick your nose, go ahead. You don't have to say, well, you know, I'm sitting in front of Mr. D. You are like a member of the family, man. You be, think that you are uh, one of my, my son, my nephew, mm -hmm, my grandson. And if you want to scratch your nose, go ahead, digging diamonds. Go ahead. Right? Ahlan wa sahlan. So the Arab says, ahlan wa sahlan. So the Christian comes in, he sits down, and he starts. New, new, new approach, new technique. They said, you... You Muslims, you believe in the Day of Judgment? What would you say? You Kenyans, Muslims, you believe? Day of yes, yes, yes. You say, yes, we believe in the Day of Judgment. That's an article of faith with us. Yawmul Qiyamah, Allah will judge us. We believe. Now, after judgment is established, the Christian is asking. If you deserve heaven, Jannah, you'll get it. If you deserve hell, Allah will put you there. You believe in that? Yes! We believe in that. If you deserve Jannah, you'll get Jannah. If you deserve Jahannam, you'll get Jahannam. Hell! We believe in that. It's all planned. Master strategy. This is this Jannah of yours. This Jannah. This heaven. Where will it be? Will it be on this earth or in the skies? He's asking you now, this Jannah of yours, your Muslim Jannah, where will it be? On earth or in the skies? Where? Where? As soon as you say the skies, he said, show me. Show me. What does your Quran say? Show me. If you say on earth, he said, show me. Whatever you say, you say on earth, you say in the sky, say, show me. <laughs> and he knows that 99% of our people will not be able to show. At the back of our mind, we know, we believe, we have heard, maybe this, maybe that. Mm. But he says, what does your Quran say? Show me. And he knows you can't. You won't be able to open the Quran and show him. He says, look, this is what Allah says. So the questioner, wants to know from me, Mr. D, that, what is the answer? <coughs> you see, everybody thinks I'm a very learned fellow. <laughs> everybody thinks so. I'm just like you, Allah. But I've been talking, talking, I talk myself into this position of talking. My knowledge is limited. But now, Mr. D, that, what is the answer? So I had to confess to my audience. I said, if that Christian was asking me that question, I would have to admit that I don't know. Wallah, I don't know. Up to that time, I didn't know. Up to that time, I didn't know. I'm not lying. Now I know what the Quran says. But when the man is asking me, I said, look, I don't know. And I'm ashamed of myself. 
I'm ashamed of myself. I'm a born Muslim. I'm not a new convert, I'm a born Muslim. I'm 75 years old. And in the eyes of the people, I'm a very knowledgeable fellow. In your eyes, Mr. Didad knows a lot. <laughs> he's like an alim, like an allama. But he's humble, he's, he's just Mr. Didad. In your mind, Didad knows. He's got all the answers. <laughs> and I'm telling this Christian, if he was asking me, I said, look, I don't know, and I'm ashamed of myself. <laughs> Having admitted that, I must turn the tables. Turn the thing on him. We have to learn to turn the tables. Put him upside down. So I said, but I take it that you know your Bible. Look, I don't know the Quran as, as, as I ought to know. But I take it that you know your Bible. And the Christian is too arrogant to say no. He said, of course. That's why he's there. He wants to push the Bible down your throat. You see, as soon as you say, I don't know what the Quran says about heaven, he said, now look, I will show you what my Bible says. Now he gave the first chance. What does your Quran say, Ya Shaykh? Show me. And you can't show. So he said, look, now I will show you what my Bible says. Now, now you are duty bound out of courtesy to listen to him. He's going to push the Bible down your throat now. That's a strategy. He's planned it. He's given you the first chance. He's very, he's a gentleman. He gave the first chance, Ya Shaykh. What does your Quran say? Show me. And you fail. He says, look, I'll show you what my Bible says. You've got to listen to him now. You can't say, no, I don't want to listen to you. You fool, you failed. Now give me a chance. <laughs> so I said, but I take it. You know your Bible. He said, of course. So what's that? He's got one under his arm. They always carry one. You know that? The Christian is helpless without the Bible. Do you know that? He can't talk like you and me. He needs a Bible under his arm. Again, he's got to open it, open it. Allah has given it to us, we can talk, talk. So says, what's that? He says, the Bible. He says, can I have a look? Can I have a look? So he gives it to you. The Holy Bible. He gives it to you. He gives it to me. So I said, I opened the first book of the Bible called Genesis. How many of you know that the first book of the Bible is Genesis? Please put up your hands. How many of you know that the first book of the Bible is Genesis? Who can name me the second book? Second book of the Bible? Exodus, very good. Third one? Numbers. Fourth one? Leviticus. Fifth one? Great, great. You deserve a prize, but I had only one Quran. <laughs> I've got a videotape for you. I've got a videotape for you. Look, as soon as it's finished, you, you got it here? From my hotel. Even the next, yeah. You pick it up, give you a videotape. Videotape, my videotape. <coughs> so he gives me the Bible. I open the book of Genesis, chapter 19, verse 30, and I give it back to him. I said, read. He want to read the Bible to me? Yeah, read this. I'm hungry for this. Read this. And the Christian missionary, he's trained. He won't follow your instructions. Hmm? He's too clever. If I tell any of you, say, read, read, read Surah Fatiha. She says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahmanir Rahim. I said, read Surah Ikhlas. She says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Kul Hu Allahu Ahad, Allahu Samad, Lam Yalid, Walam Yulad. You're going to read. Muslim will read. He said, read this. He said, if you know, it's right. He reads. Not the Christian. Uh -huh. He's going to read this. And he smells a rat. <laughs> a dead rat. <laughs> he wants to change the subject. You know, he wants to talk about the weather. He wants to talk about business. Say, what's wrong with you? Is that the word of God? He said, yes. I want to hear you read. I want to hear you read. I want to listen to you reading it. If he reads, what does he read? It's too shameful. Allah is too shameful. It's too shameful. Too shameful. This this holy Kitabul Muqaddas. They say in Arabic. You know that? Kitabul Muqaddas means the holy Kitab. Al Muqaddas. 
the holy holy bible <laughs> he is talking about hazrat lut alayhi salam hazrat lut alayhi salam his people were destroyed for that abominable sin sort of me you call them gays gays you know gays men with men his nation did that so allah destroyed them he was saved the bible says and his two daughters and they live in a cave and in the cave the eldest daughter has an idea he said look our father is old he's gone old and there's not another man on earth who can come in and to us and have sex with us like all the earth what people do they, there's nobody to do it to us come let us make our father drink wine khamar and we'll lie with him we'll sleep with him have sex with him with the father so that we may preserve the seed of our father his name can carry on so they made the father drink wine and the eldest daughter went and slept with the father had sex with the father daughter having sex with his father with the father and next night she tells the younger said look last night i did it now you do the same tonight so they made him drunk again and the second daughter goes and sleeps with the father has sex and thus the bible says both the daughters of lot were with child by the father father made the daughters pregnant this is the holy bible this is what you want to push it down your throat and if you don't know you deserve to get it down your throat push it down your throat rubbish crap it's crap but the guy is going to push it down your throat because you don't know what it is all about father having sex with his daughters and making them pregnant so i'm asking the christian what is the moral of that what lesson what lesson you learn from that father having sex with the daughters and making them pregnant both his daughters and a prophet we believe that prophets of god are sinless all prophets they are sinless but here this prophet of god he is having sex with his daughters and making his daughters pregnant and both of them bore a son each and they became famous in the bible as ammonites and the moabites famous blessed blessed in the bible god told the jews go and kill the palestinians destroy them all men women and children nothing that breeds must live and they killed oxen and donkeys and men and women and children everything even sucklings are not to be spared but the ammonites and the moabites thou shall not touch the jews were told because they are the seed of lot father with his daughter prohibiting that that must be preserved that you mustn't touch them don't interfere with them don't harass them don't meddle with them <laughs> this rubbish gallah says protect them but the palestinians kill them all kill them all so what's the moral i'm asking the christian what is the moral what is the lesson you learn we tell our children fables you know fairy tales the fox and the grapes who heard about the fox and the grapes you heard the story about the fox and the grapes huh never heard you people don't hear in kenya fox and the grapes that a fox you know he saw a bunch of grapes and he jumped and he jumped and he can't reach it until he got tired so he says sour grapes you didn't hear that yes so we are trying to teach our, no fox jump for grapes no fox does that but we are trying to tell our children don't be like that greedy fox my child when you can't get a thing you say sour grapes don't do that the dog and his shadow the dog and his shadow no dog this thing didn't happen these are fairy tales invention of man imagination a dog finds a bone with the bone in his mouth is crossing a wooden bridge across a river and he sees the reflection in the water there's another dog with a bone in his mouth so he's greedy for the other dog's bone so he's a boo so what he had in his mouth he lost it <laughs> so we are trying to tell you my child don't be like that silly dog what allah has given you be grateful don't be greedy for the other dog's bone otherwise you're going to lose what you have that's a moral that's a lesson fairy tales the wolf and the lamb fairy tales but it's a moral what's the moral of this father prohibiting with his daughters and begetting bastard children children of incest what's the moral come 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 man tell me what is the moral what's the lesson you learn from that no lesson so is immoral in the book of god god talking this rubbish huh trying to teach you that you can also do the same astaghfirullah still genesis 
Still the first book. Don't go out of the first book. First book, chapter 35, verse 22. He speaks about Reuben, the elder son of Yaqub, alayhi salam. He goes and prohibits with his mother. He has sex with his mother. One of the ya elder son of Yaqub, alayhi salam. He goes and prohibits with his mother. What's the moral? What's the moral? Ask him, what's the moral? What do you learn from that? What your children, what your daughters, what, the, what do you want them to learn from that? Hmm? Son, go ahead, has sexual relationship with his mother. Still Genesis, first book, man, don't get out of that first book. There's so much there. It's crap, crap, shit. The whole book, chapter 38, verses 15 to 18, it speaks about Judah, the father of the Jewish race. Judah, from whom we get the word Judea, Judaism. Not the son of Yaqub alayhi salam. He's going to Timnat. Timnat. Don't worry about the names. To share his sheep. And he sees a woman sitting by the roadside. She had her face covered. So he thinks she is a harlot, a prostitute, a whore, a hooker. So he comes up to her and says, allow me to come in unto thee. Means let me have sex with you. So she said, what will you give me? So he says, I'll give you a kid from the flock, a goat kid. So what guarantee that they will give it? You know, you have sex and you enjoy and you go away and you don't send it. So what guarantee do you want? He said, your signet, your ring, and your bracelet, they used to wear bangles those days. And your staff, the Asa, Asa of Hazrat Musa. So the old man gave it to her and he prohibited with his daughter-in-law by the roadside and he made her pregnant. And twins were born, twins, two sons. And these twins are the great grandfathers of your God, Jesus Christ. These twins, the bastard children, offspring of father-in-law and daughter-in-law, that offspring, they become the great-grandfathers of your God, Jesus. What's the moral? What's the lesson? Father-in-law cohabiting with his daughter-in-law and begetting bastard children, they become the great-grandfathers of your God, Jesus Christ. <laughs> What's the moral? No morals. Immoral. <laughs> and you carry on. One of the sons of Daud he rapes his sister. Another son of Daud a prophet's son. Well, the father, according to the Bible, he committed adultery with Uriah's wife, with Bathsheba, David and Bathsheba. The father did that, and his sons are doing it. One son did it to his sister, he raped her. Another son, on his palace roof, when the father was gone, on the palace roof, he put up a tent so the son doesn't get him to avoid the son getting him. You know, son, the son is trying too hard. And he makes ten of his father's wives to sleep. And one by one, he raped with them all. Ten of his father's wives, he raped them one by one. This is all the Holy Bible. With that crap, he's getting converts. With that crap, he's getting converts. The Christian, with this rubbish, he's getting converts. And you and I, we are not getting converts with the Quran. I want an answer from you. Anybody give me the answer. What is the reason that that guy with that crap, he can get converts, and you and I, we are not getting converts with the Quran? Tell me another videotape for you. Right? Huh? Come, 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 my brothers. Yes. No, no, you got your tape already. <laughs> Last one. This is the last chance. <laughs> right, right. You got it. We are not talking. The Christian is talking. He's selling. He's talking. Huh? Just this evening, somebody gave me this. This bulletin. Kenya Church Growth. The whole booklet is dedicated to the Muslims. This whole thing is dedicated to Muslims. How to convert the Muslims to Christianity. How to make monkeys out of you all. This, the whole thing is teaching them. The Christian missionaries, this is for the missionaries. Right? It says, our Muslim neighbors, so near and yet so far. You are so near and we are. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. No, Allah. Look, Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes it an article of faith for its followers to believe in Jesus. Am I right? No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus. The guy does not have to come and convince you that Jesus Christ was a mighty messenger of God. We believe. We believe in his miraculous birth, that without any male intervention he was born. Which many modern day Christians, including bishops of the Anglican Church, they don't believe today. We believe. He, has, he doesn't have to prove it to us. We believe. We believe that he gave life to the dead by God's permission, and he healed those born blind and the lepers by God's permission. We believe. We believe Allah took him up, and we believe he's coming back. What more? Only thing, the Christian says, this guy needs a little push. To believe that Jesus is his God, his Savior, he died for your sins, that's all. Otherwise, we believe in his miraculous birth, we say he's the Messiah, the Messiah, translated to Christ, born miraculously, gave life to the dead, miracles, miracles, we believe all that. We believe. He's in the company of those nearest to God. We believe what more is required. Just a little push. Just a little push. Make him to accept Jesus as his personal savior, that he died for your sins. Right. So he's telling our neighbors, so near and yet so far. Hmm, pitiful, you are so near to him, and yet you're so far. And the whole thing, the whole thing, every page. Islam in Kenya, an overview. Hmm. Discipling Muslim converts, how to get the Muslim converts, you know, to, to become like donkeys. Pastoral interviews, this is the latest. Taken out in March, March, to convert you. What are you doing for him? What are you doing for him? Those questions the guys were asking. Beautiful productions. Look at this. How to find the road to paradise, four color job. Before the guy leaves, he leaves this with you. With ayahs on the Quran inside, ayahs on the Quran inside. Suggesting that the heaven will be on earth. Ayahs on the Quran, in the Christian pamphlet. The quote, Suggesting that this earth will be your Jannah. And again, from Surah Zumar, this is when the people will be led to heaven, Jannah, and the angels will welcome us. Salamun alaykum tiptum fatkuluha khalidin. Come, 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 my Allah's true devotees, come, come. And the man in the Jannah will say, Wa qalu alhamdulillahi lazi sadakana wa'dahu wa awrasan al arda. Wa awrasan al arda. And he has made us to inherit this earth. Suggesting that the heaven will be here on this earth. Now talk. Talk, man, talk. What does your Quran say? Look, he's quoted you your Quran. He's quoting you our Quran in English. And if you can't read English, you want French, you get it in French. If you can't read French, I don't know whether you've got them in Swahili already here. Maybe they haven't reached you yet. They haven't reached you yet. They're coming. They're coming. So, they are working, working, working. We are not talking. We don't talk. So now, my dear brothers, I'm here not to entertain you people. You are getting entertained. At the moment, I know you are getting entertained. You are enjoying. You are enjoying listening to me. Am I right? You are enjoying listening to me. You do enjoy. Huh? Yeah, everybody seems to enjoy. Ahmadida talking, the way his beard shakes, and I said, very nice. Everybody loves it. Hmm? That's not the real purpose of my visit here. I want to hold special classes. Just two hours. And only 25 to 30 at a time in a class. But well, this is a class, a workshop. This is a lecture. I can't do that in a lecture. I want a class of 25 to 30 only. People who can read and write English. Only two hours. In the mornings from 10 to 12, that's all. 10 to 12, finish. You are qualified. I make you a black belt karate expert, a kung fu expert. You know how to slash the enemy, how to chop off his head with your bare hands, how to do the job. I want only 25 to 30 people in a class. That's all. I can't help it. Next day, another 25, 30. Next day, another 25, 30 until I go. Until I go. Now, 
it can be helped. You can't, you can't hold a class of this magnitude. You can't. It doesn't work. So those of you who are interested in that class, you'll have to sacrifice one day only for two hours. 10 to 12, that's all, it'll take two hours. So I can arm you, all this is what I told you. Tomorrow morning, a Christian comes and knocks at your door. Huh? Yeah, man, what, what did Uncle Didat say? Hey, you know, if, I, if Uncle Didat was here, he'll give him a knockout blow, you know? He'll give him an upper, uppercut. But now you are getting that uppercut. He's giving it to you. Uncle Didat is not there. I want to prepare you that you can do the job. Uncle Didat is gone, but I want to leave at least 30 Didats and another 30 Didats and another 30 Didats every day. That you can carry on the work and you can teach others. Now, you'll have to contact Mr. Abdullah, my, my Amir. You see, on coming here, I have appointed Brother Abdullah to be my Amir. Because everybody is pulling me this way, that way, you know, old friendship. I don't know which way to turn. I can't put off anybody. So I appointed him as my Amir. I said, Ya Akhi, look, you'll have to do this job. You tell me where to go. Masjid al Nur, I didn't know there's a Masjid al Nur. <laughs> South Sea. I didn't know. But he said, Masjid, I said, right. Tomorrow night at the Jami Masjid. I said, right. Whatever he tells me, he said, certain day Mombasa, I said, right. You know, whatever he tells me, I do. Uh, this class is here. 30, 30 students only, people who can read and write English, to go through this for two hours. You contact Brother Abdullah and only 25 to 30 for a session. Then the next day another 25, 30, and next day another 25, 30 while I'm here, and then Rukhsat. Sure. Right. Where do you get in touch with you? Where, where, where do you get in touch with you? Yes. John, you through here. Yes. Through probably the telephone, 763-209. Through the telephone, 763 through the telephone, 763-209. 763-209. The Office of Young Muslim? Or Abdul the Hamid. offices of the Young Muslim Association. Yeah, Brother Abdul Hamid. Brother Abdul Hamid. Young Muslim Association. Brother, only 25 to 30, the maximum at a time. Right, now my dear brothers and sisters, I leave myself open to questions. Any questions that you have, you know, from the enemy or your own, things have been worrying you in this field of comparative religion, why this, why that, you know, the, what the Christian is asking you, and maybe you gave an answer, but you're not very happy with the answer you gave. You want to know whether there's a better answer than what you gave. Maybe I might be able to help you and share it with others as well. So I'm leaving myself open to you for questions and answers. Yes, my son. Come, 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 come. Come. Come, come closer, come closer. Some places in the ground, in we are told, Allah in something in the translations in English, it's written we, we, we. What does those we mean? Very good. Very good. Uh, the question was that in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about himself in the plural, we, we. He wants to know who is this we. The Christian will also ask you that. So Allah says, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun. That it is for us to send down the wahi, the revelation, and it is for us to protect it. Who is this us? Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? Huh? Allah, Jibreel, and Muhammad? No. No. Not Akhi Jibreel and Muhammad and Allah. Hmm? Not Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. No. Who is this we and who is this us? Now, every Eastern language, say, I don't know about Swahili. Every Eastern language, including my own, Hebrew, Arabic, 
every language has got two types of plurals. Two types. One is a plural of respect, and the other plural of numbers. Every language, I don't know about African languages. Every language, Eastern language, has two types of plurals. This little boy, this little boy, your brother, I ask him in my language, I say, Tamaru hu nam che. You know what I said? What is the name of you all? But I'm only asking what is your name. But the language I'm speaking, what is the name of you all? The little boy I'm asking, Aapka kya naam hai? If he understands Urdu, Aap, Aap means more than one. Tamaru, you all. What is the name? But I'm asking, what is your name? Because if I speak that respectfully with the child, the child in turn will ask me, Aapka kya naam hai? What is your name, sir? If I say, what is thy name? Taru hu naam che. So he's asked me, he says, Taru hu naam che. You know, that means that. What is your? You see? So in Arabic and Hebrew, and in Urdu and in Gujarati, every Eastern language has got two types of plurals. In Arabic, this is the plural of respect. They call it the royal we, the royal we. The royalties use that. They say, we have decreed. Who? The Queen of England. But she says, we. Who is we? Her husband too? Mm -hmm. We means herself. But this is the language. So in the Quran, Allah speaks about the, the plural, we have created the heavens and the earth. We, we have sent down the revelation. And it is for us to protect it. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. There is no Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, or Allah, Jibreel, and Muhammad. Yes, my son. Yes. Speak up. Just stay where you are. I'll repeat your question. When we tell the Christians that uh, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been sending the prophets to all the nations at different times, so when we, when we tell them the successor of the Jesus that the prophet Isa is Muhammad, they say, no, we believe that the successor is supposed to be the Holy Ghost. So how do we give our reason? Right, right. right. Uh, the question is, that when our brother says, when we suggest to the Christian that every nation has had a prophet, that's what the Quran says. And there never was a people without a warner having been sent amongst them. And to every nation a guide, Allah says in the Quran. We believe that the, your forefathers had prophets coming to you. The Zulus had the prophets coming to them. And the Khazars and the Chwanas, every nation has had a prophet. Maybe you that can't remember because you didn't have a written language. Your language was not written. The Zulus didn't have a written language. The Khaza didn't have a written language. The Chwana didn't have a written language. So they only talk about, they talk about the Ten Commandments. Unga pingi, do not commit adultery. Unga manga, say do not commit, don't lie. Unga mbulali, say don't kill. Where did you get all this from? He said, Babam Kulu wash Allah. He said, our great grandfather said that. Who's your great grandfather? He doesn't know the name because it's not recorded. But our fathers, our fathers, our fathers. There was somebody among them who was a prophet of God. Every nation has had a prophet. So our brother tells that to the Christian. And then the successor to Jesus Christ, he says, is our Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the guy says, no. The successor to Jesus is the Holy Ghost. Is that it? Yes, this is the Holy Ghost. So what is the answer? He wants to know. So I said, John... Chapter 16, verse 7, it says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, Jesus says. It is expedient for you, it is better for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I go, I will send him. In Arabic, لَكِنِّي أَكُلُ لَكُمُ الْحَقُّ إِنَّهُ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِنْ أَنْتَلِكَ لِأَلَّهُ إِلَّا مَنْ تَلِكْ لَا يَعْتِيكُمُ الْمُؤَزِّ وَلَكِنْ إِنْ زَحَبْتُ أُرْسِلْهُ إِلَيْكُمْ And if somebody can guess this next language I'm giving you, same verse. Uh, if you can guess right, you get another videotape. You get another videotape. Apiata basin, we akilik is apiati nunu quick tijal and nasha jil, kedu jil ashibu inunu quick, kunalar, ukabatuj, inunu quick. Anybody, what language is that? 
Huh? Huh? Jewish. No, that, that's not Hebrew. Huh? Huh? You know, so near you people. Wallah, it's so near and you can't guess. Huh? You'll never be able to guess. You know, you people are not interested in your people's languages. It's a Dinka language, Linka, Southern Sudan, the language of General John Garang. <laughs> I was going to Sudan, so I learned, I got the Dinka Bible, and I learned this. No, no, there is no better way to talk to the guy than to talk in his own mother tongue. Use his Bible, man. The first time I came to Kenya, I got a Swahili Bible. I got a Swahili Bible, and I learned some verses. Listen. Setaza meni mikono yangu, na migu yangu. Yagua ni mimi ummenyewe. Umshige ni mshige ni uone. Wagua roho, haina mwili na mifupa. Kama navyo niona, mimi guwa nayo. Is that Swahili? No. 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 You people are not prepared to pay the price. You got to do a little bit of homework, my children. Look. You can't get things for nothing. Not by swallowing a pill, you can't become a superman. You know, black belt karate, Shh, you got to exercise and exercise. You know, same movement a thousand times over, it becomes an automatic reflex, action. You got to do that. But you want to take a pill and you want to become a superman. You can't become superman like that. You got to do some homework. Right, next question. Excuse me, as a religious scholar, I want to ask you one question. I know you from 1990, and I have said that you fight against Christianity. My question is that, what about the other religion? In your commentary about the Hinduism, Buddhism, and the other religion in the world. Second question. No, no, one at a time. Only one question at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Only one question at a time. Uh, the brother wants to know that, you know, it's always the Christian, the Christian, the Christian. What about the Buddhists? What about the Hindus? What about the Jews? Am I right? I said, you see, who is coming and knocking at your door? Did any Jew come and knock at your door? Did any Hindu come and knock at your door to say to convert you to Hinduism? In your life yet, a single Hindu has come and knocked at your door. I am talking about the Hindu missionary coming and telling you that you're worshipping Ar-Rahman, the merciful God. Why don't you worship Ram instead? You know, instead of worshipping God Almighty Allah, why don't you worship Hanuman, the monkey God, or the Ganesh, the elephant head? Did any Hindu come and tell you that? Did any Jew come to convert you? Any Buddhist come to convert you? No. But the Christian is knocking at your door. The Christians are knocking at your door. Uh -huh. Nobody come to me to convert to any religion. Uh -huh. But uh, I have seen that my question is that I want to convert the other religion. No, no, right, right, right. But first is, you see what you are hungry for. No, no, not you. The people. You see? I'm sure you get Christians coming and knocking at your door, telling you to become a Christian. In my country, there are 1,000 different sects and denominations among the whites and 3,000 among the blacks, and they're all looking for converts. The Seventh-day Adventists, have you heard of them? Yeah. Jehovah's Witnesses, have you heard of them? Now, among the Buddhists, what sect did you hear about? About the Hindus, what sect did you hear about? Coming and knocking at your door? No. So, I have been dealing with the Hindus, there is a tape available called From Hinduism to Islam. Get it? Get it? It'll cost you money. No? It doesn't drop from heaven. From Hinduism to Islam. About the Jews, we have a number of tapes about the Jews, about Arabs and Israel, conflict or conciliation. Is Israel set up for dictation? It'll cost you money. Get that. Get that. Thank you. Sorry. I think all my brothers here share the don't run away, my son. Don't run away. Don't run away. Yes, yes, yes. If the ladies class, we have a ladies class. I know it's a bit tough. It's a very tough subject. It's distasteful. It is like an inoculation.
an injection for cholera. It's painful. But I am prepared to have a class, same thing, idea, 25 to 30. Abdullah, also for the ladies, 25 to 30, you know. Is, uh, to it's a bit, bit tall order. Let's do one little thing at a time, inshallah. One thing at a time. Yes. Yes, that's my question is, uh, actually, I've got two related questions if you don't mind. One question is, the Christians normally, they argue and say that in the Quran, the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so that's what Allah that says, he has forgiven him, he sees the past and the present for his mistakes, where Jesus is sinless. So this is the ayah that they use. The other one is about... Uh, of course, before the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came in Iraq, they claim, the Christians, that uh, the, the, the other books allowed a man going with his daughter, a man going with his mother, a man going with his daughter-in-law, before Moses came and brought, brought the Torah. So they claim that before Moses came, it was allowed. Because Ken and Adel, how did they get the kids? This is the way they did. So I would like to thank you. Right. The first question was, you see, when you ask two questions, it becomes heavy for me. What was the first question again? Right, about sinless. Allah tells our Nabi Kareem, your past and future sins are forgiven. Alhamdulillah. Jesus Christ didn't say that. But no, every baptism, he was baptized by John the Baptist. Right. He asked him, there is no baptism without repentance. Unless the guy was a hypocrite, he had no sin but he's repenting. He's repenting to God for sins that he didn't do. There is no baptism without repentance. Then if the person thinks that he is sinless, he is pure. He is the worst sinner. The guy who thinks I am sinless, I am masoom. You know, I don't sin. I am an angel. That guy is a devil incarnate. Whoever man thinks is arrogant, that you know, I don't sin. I am masoom, clear, pure, immaculate. Thomas Carlyle describes that type of mentality. He said, he is pure as dead dry sand is pure. That guy never says, look, I make, I make no mistakes. I don't sin. I am not tempted. But Jesus Christ was tempted. Wasn't he tempted by the devil? The devil picked him up and took him to a high mountain. So he allowed himself to be tempted by the devil. Is that not a sin? That's a sin. Then on the cross he's crying, Allah, Allah, lama sabachtani. My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Allah forsook him. According to his words, he's a sinner. Allah rejected him. That's what he says. So, Turn the tables on the guy. You got to know a little bit here, there, and say, no, "Come on, man! Everything will come to you, like a computer. All the answers will come." What was the second question? The Torah. Oh, right, 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 right. So we say, "Now, nah, look, all these." David, Tawud al Salam. This was after Moses. This was after Musa alayhi salam. Dawood was born. When was he born? It was after Musa alayhi salam. After they came out from, from Egypt. Right? Suleiman. When? After Musa. They followed the law of Musa. So the law of Musa says, you can prohibit with your mother, with your sister, with your daughter, with somebody else's wife, and yet your book doesn't condemn it at all. Your book doesn't condemn it. That means he's giving the okay. Did God reproach Lot, so what the hell, you, what you did? Huh? Did he reproach Judah for begetting those bastard children from, from his daughter-in-law? Did he? Did he reproach the sons of David, one raping his sister and the other guy raping his mothers, ten mothers in a row? So what the, that book 
itself lends itself to this. Therefore, you have it in the West. It's wholesale, endemic, child molestation, people cohabiting with their own little children. It's endemic, it's like an epidemic it has grown. Same thing in South Africa, among the whites of South Africa. Yes, my brother. Last question. This is the last question. Look, everything, every good thing, you know, comes to an end sometimes. And this will be the last question. My question is about the news. Most of the news are supplied by Western countries, or 90 percent, I would say. And especially now in times of tumor, why there is no action being taken? Then there is a news supply like CNN for Muslims. Why there is no 24-hour news service from Islamic countries, and why there is very little support from Islamic countries in this country? It looks like we haven't reached that stage yet. Unfortunately, the Muslims haven't reached that awareness, or you know that that type of a technology that, you know, we can compete with the West. It's very, very unfortunate, very unfortunate. But inshallah, hope and pray that, you know, Allah Bari Ta'ala gives it to us, that we also now finish. It was the last question, the last question. We'll have to leave it for tomorrow night. No comments. <laughs> Like a